Hi, my name is Taylor Faye and I post regular sewing related content. I'm sewing how-to videos, vlogs, if you just fancy watching me sew. I also sell my own PDF patterns on my website, www.taylordressmaker.com. But in this video, I'm gonna be continuing my series on Affinity Designer um, and how it can be used to create your own sewing patterns. Even if you have absolutely no design experience, you've never been to fashion school, you just wanna have a go at making your own patterns, even it's, if it's just for you or if it's to sell, this tool is great and it is absolutely a minute fraction of the amount that Adobe Illustrator would cost you on a monthly subscription. But in today's tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to get your digital patterns ready for print at home on A4. If you've ever wondered how you get these, how you get patterns that fit together seamlessly, um, that print out perfectly with no issues, then I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. Now I won't babble on, we're gonna get on with the tutorial, but I thought I would just quickly say, I'm really sorry if I sound uh, very nasal in this video. I'm just coming off the end of a cold and I'm sniffing a lot. I'm aware I did it last night when I felt a little bit worse than I do now. So I'm really sorry about that. But without further ado, let's get on with the tutorial. so you want to open up a new document and now this is where I need to explain how you know what size to make your file so obviously we want to be printing on A4 however if you just make this A4 size it means that some of your pattern will be cut off by the kind of bleed margins that your printer will give so the way I do it is I'm going to do one centimeter less on every side um, of an A4 size. So we've got the page width here and the page height here for an A4, because I've clicked on A4, comes up here. Then you want to change your document units to whatever you use. I use centimeters, okay? And then you want to take two centimeters off the page width and two centimeters off the page height. Um, so you're basically taking off one centimeter up here, one centimeter here, one centimeter here, and one centimeter here. Um, and that will become clear later when I show you getting it ready for print. Um, it might seem confusing now, but trust me when I say you want to do it. So the page width will be 19 and the page height will be 27.7. Uh, and then you also want to click create artboard and make sure that it's in portrait mode uh, and then just press create. So this is your artboard. Obviously this is only one of the artboards, so we need to make more of them. However, I recommend putting all the details on the artboard first before duplicating it so you don't have to do it on all the others. So the first thing you want to do is create a cutting line for when you stick all your pattern pieces together once you've printed it out. Um, so the way I would do that is I would come over here to the pen tool and then click in the corner, click in that corner, click in that corner, and then that corner, and then that one to join it up to make a curve. Um, and then I would go to stroke and just make that one point. Um, and then you also need some shapes to be able to line up your bits of paper. I will show at the end how all this comes together if, in case any of this confuses you, so don't worry. Um, so I am going to go onto the shape tool. It's already on diamond, but if you want to pick another shape, you can. I think diamond is pretty good because it's symmetrical, like a square. Uh, you could use a square. I don't know why I want to use a diamond. I just picked the diamond. Um, so you want to press shift and then drag. That makes sure that the shape is completely symmetrical and can't be skewed at a weird angle or anything. Um, so make it as big as you want to make it and then move it to the middle. So I've got these lines that come up when I'm in the middle of my document in the middle vertically and then in the middle horizontally. If they're not coming up for you, if you come up here, this little magnet, that's snapping. So you need to make sure that that's on so then you can find it in the middle. So. I've popped that on the edge. You want one on each side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control J with that selected and that will just duplicate it. So it's now on top of the original shape. If you press Shift and drag, it'll make sure that it stays in line and snaps in there. And then if we 
click on that one again, press Control J, and then Shift, just get it in the middle, and then drag up to the top, and then we'll just duplicate that again, press Shift, drag it to the middle, Shift and drag to the bottom. So when people, basically the edge of this document is the cutting line. So then if you have another one of these, you would line them up to the diamond to create a whole diamond. Um, so if I zoom in, you can see here your cutting line. You'll see that on the document when you come to print. Uh, okay, so um, if this is just for you, you don't need to worry about what I'm gonna show you next, but if you're making your own pattern business, then you can put your logo on it somewhere. So here's my logo, just to show you. Uh, I'll just paste that into there. I uh, would make that a lot smaller and then just put it in a corner or even at the top, but it might get a bit in the way there. So I usually put mine to the bottom right hand corner. And then the last thing you want to do is go over here to the artistic text tool and drag, and then you want to number this artboard. So I'm going to put A1. And then I'm also going to put the opacity down just so it doesn't take away from the pattern when it is on there. And then you can put it in the middle or you can put it in the corner. I'm just going to shove it up here for now. Um, so that is an artboard ready to go. You can add more things on here if you want. Um, you can also use artboard one to kind of like showcase what the pattern is almost like a top page. So you could put like your brand name here and then the name of the pattern with the drawing and the size. Um, that's what I do with my patterns. However, I'm just not gonna do that for this because I'm just showing you. Um, so now your artboard is done, you need to duplicate it. So if you collapse the uh, artboard, just to make it easier for you and then select artboard one, and then you're gonna press control J and now it's pasted another one on top. So if you press shift and drag and snap it next to it, you see now the diamonds join up. That is what it's gonna look like when it's stuck together. This won't be what it looks like when it prints. There'll be a little border when it prints, but once you cut the border and stick them together, this is exactly what it will look like. So I'm just gonna zoom out. <clears throat> a quick um, tip for zooming in and out. If you press control and then scroll with your mouse scroller, that can go in and out. Um, so if you want, I'm just gonna do about four or five um, columns or rows. Oh, I don't, I'm one of those people that can never remember what is a column and what is a row. I think a column is down and row is horizontal. <laughs> um, but you get what, what I mean. Uh, right, so artboard, J that again, control J, and then shift and drag. Snap from there, control J, shift and drag, control J, shift and drag. Okay, so now you have this row um, and what you need to do is rename them. So you've got artboard two, that one is artboard three, Artboard four, artboard five, okay. Um, and then, so that's your row. If you then come back to artboard five, press control J and this time press shift and drag and pull it down and then across. Okay, and then control J. Oh, I don't know where that went. I'll just press undo. Right, this one's selected. Control J. Shift and drag. Control J. Oh, Control J. Okay, after a while, the program gets a bit smart and, and realizes where you want it to go. So if I pressed Control J again, it would paste it next to it. Uh, but I don't need it there. That kind of comes in and out, that function. Occasionally it's helpful, sometimes it's not. Uh, right, okay, so. And we want to name these. So that one's artboard six. It's best if you keep them in the correct order. Uh, just so you don't confuse things. Artboard seven. Artboard eight. <coughs> Sorry about that. Very.
croaky. Um, and then artboard 10. Okay, so let's just do one more row for good measure. Okay, control J, let's pull that down. Shift it across so it's in order. Um, control J, control J, control J, yeah, it's doing it for me. Okay. Right, we just want to name these, so that's Artboard 11, Artboard, oops, disappeared, Artboard 12, Artboard 13, Artboard 14, Artboard 15. <clears throat> right, okay. So the last thing you want to do before adding your pattern is changing the numbers so at the moment they're all a1 so basically you just want to come and go a2 a3 a4 a5 and then these ones will be b1 b2 oop b3 b4 B5, and then that will be C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. Okay, so there you have it. There is your finished artboard. Um, for some of my patterns, I need considerably more than this, but you just have to adjust it to how big your pattern is. This is just to kind of show you. Um, so when it comes to putting your pattern in, make sure you collapse all the artboards just to make your life easier. Uh, okay, they're all collapsed. And then open up your pattern that you've made elsewhere. This is one of my um, unfinished patterns at the moment. I'm just using it as an example. So if we go with my front panel, if we click on that, um, it's important that all your layers, like your individual pieces are put into layers. So I've, there's lots of like lines and things in here, but I've made it a lot less confusing. I've just got front panel, back panel and sleeve. So if we go on front panel, press control C and then paste it in. Okay. So Notice how you can only see a small section. That's because it's been pasted onto artboard six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, yeah, it's on artboard nine. So drag it to where you want it to be. I'm gonna have it on artboard one. Uh, so now it will move. So if you collapse artboard nine, go all the way down to artboard one. So wherever you can see it, that's the artboard that it's on. So here you go, front panel. Now you wanna take it off any artboard and just have it standard and then suddenly it'll appear. Okay. And I will do back panel, paste that on. Oh, that's not gone on any particular artboard. Oh, it does now. Right, let's pull that over here. Remember, if you want things to fit better, you can turn them. So let's do that like that, just to make use of the space. Uh, where is it? It's on artboard three, so and then drag it out of artboard three. Okay, and then come back and take the sleeve, control C, press paste. Uh, so that's not going to fit vertically. So if we move it like that, a little bit more. Uh, I'm not sure if that's quite fitting in because I can't see it. Let's find out what panel are we on? Or an artboard three, so if we move that up. Uh, yeah, that's all on. Okay, so there is my pattern. I will often delete any artboards that aren't being used. So artboard five, just because it'd be a waste of paper, that can go, delete objects. And then what is that? Artboard 11 is not being used, so you can delete that. Okay, so there's your pattern. 
on the pieces. Um, and now what you need to do is export it to a PDF file. So if you come to file and then go to export, you need to make sure that PDF is selected, not any of these. Um, and then where it says area, sometimes it will select like a specific artboard. You don't want any specific artboard, you want the whole document. Uh, and then if you want to, you can go to more and mess around with some of these specifics. I probably wouldn't mess around with any of these other than allow advanced features and include layers. I usually untick both of those. Um, however, if you're doing multiple sizes, you might want to include layers. That means that when people download your pattern, they can get rid of the, the um, sizes they don't want. So if you're doing like size six to size 20, they can get rid of all the layers that they don't need and only have their specific size. But I usually only, uh, do one size per document, so I don't let people see the layers. Uh, so close that, and then if you go to export, it will give you the option to save it. Now I'm just going to save this as Affinity Test for these purposes. Okay, and then I'm going to go to my downloads and open affinity test with Adobe. It's important to do it via Adobe. I find sometimes when you print via an internet browser, it can mess with your sizing slightly. So if you come to, so this is what it looks like, all your pages. Okay, so if you come to file and then print, um, so select your printer, I'm just gonna do pages one to two just for this, so I don't have to waste lots of paper showing you, but I will show you how they print. Um, okay, so then you go to actual size or custom scale can be used as well, but it must be at 100%, nothing else. You don't want fit and you don't want shrink oversized pages. You also don't want choose paper source by PDF size selected because look what it does to it makes it all skewed and weird so make sure that's unselected so you can see that the lines which were the at the edge of the normal document here these lines are inside the actual printed size so it means that people can cut across these lines and it will still be the pattern will still be the correct size if we'd have made the document to a4 it means that these lines would have been right to the edge and then you would also have had a little bleed and it would have been completely messed up so yeah Print your pages, actual size, and don't select choose paper source by PDF size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print this now and I'm going to show you how it comes out and how you cut and stick it together just so you can have a real idea of what actually what it actually looks like when it comes out. So just to show you, this is how my two pages have printed out. So they're or the edges of my original document and then which now allows for cutting space so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut and stick it together just so you can show that it does work how it should do so what you would do is you would cut this line actually I'll cut this one just so it's smaller and then I'll overlap it and you would stick. Just line that up. And as you can see, the pattern is exactly the correct dimensions and exactly to scale. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that that made sense. And if you have any questions at all about anything that you saw in this video or any generic questions about Affinity Designer to do with sewing patterns, please don't hesitate to contact me. I would be happy to ask, answer any questions. Um, you can comment down below, I will reply, um, or you can message me on Instagram at Taylor Dressmaker, or you can go on my website and fill in one of my forms and I'll link to that down below. If you could hit the like and subscribe button as well, I would really, really appreciate that. It's free for you to do and it helps me continue doing what I'm doing. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.